The first speaker of the day is going to be uh, Paul Brunet, who is going to present joint work with David Pim, protection, separation, and locality in concurrent cleaning algebra. There you go, Paul. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so it, uh, today I'm going to, uh, to present a model called pump set with boxes. Um, and uh, I'll use this model to talk about uh, various uh, things like uh, protection, separation, and locality in the setting of concurrent clean algebra. Uh, the uh, specificity of this work is that I'm going to both present uh, an algebraic account of pump set with boxes and also uh, uh, a lot. So first, uh, a brief uh, reminder of what is concurrent. Um, it's an algebraic framework uh, designed to reason about concurrent programs. So the, the syntax of the program where we consider in concurrent clean algebra is, uh, is given by this, uh, this grammar. So, uh, you, should you have a constant zero that corresponds to a, an execution that abots one that is a, a skip. Then you have a, a, a finite number of atomic actions. Uh, you, you don't know what they are, they're just atomic. And then you can compose programs in various ways. So you can compose them in sequence, in parallel. You can also make a non determinate which allow a somewhat abstractly model uh, a form of uh, conditional branching. And, uh, and this uh, non-deterministic loop, the clean star, which uh, iterates uh, an unbounded but finite number of times a program. The semantics of concurrent clean algebra is given in terms of sets of POM sets, uh, which you should think about as being partially ordered traces. So in, in a sequential program, you can give a, a sequential uh, trace semantics where a program is associated to a set of words which correspond to every uh, finite, um, to, uh, finite executions of this, uh, sorry. Uh, I saw some, a conversation, uh, someone said something, no? Oh. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I just said, yeah, Paul, uh, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just that uh, it seems that your upload is quite bad. We can't hear you, but oh. it's, uh, it's not very good. Can you try to uh, get your um, your webcam? And you regain some. You can just close, close, uh, can you try to to close, your, to close the webcam. To okay. close your webcam. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Probably you get you again a bit to that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right. So um so yes, you have a, so uh, the semantics is given in terms of pump sets. So you have events and there's a partial order between the events. So it's a a, a generalization of words which correspond to uh, um, finite traces of programs. And then if you want to do uh, verification with CK, the way you can do it is through a program equivalent or program containment. Typically, you're going to use the statements like uh, a program is smaller than a property, meaning every behavior of the program is contained in the set of legal behavior as specified by the property. But this, um, this way of writing specification can be restrictive sometimes because there are properties that uh, don't exactly match uh, the programs we can write. And then there's a, a second limitation, which I'm going to talk about right now, which is the way a concurrent clean algebra deals with interleavings. So if you want to have, uh, to have some notion of interleavings in CKA, you add axiomatically the the interchange law, sometimes called weak exchange law, uh, which I, I wrote here, and sorry, and uh, semantically, it corresponds to a, a, a partial order between pump sets, where basically a, a pump set is smaller than another one 
if it has the same events, but with more order. So you have a, a bijection between the events of the big pump set to the events of the small pump set, such that every pair that is ordered in the big one is also ordered the same way in the small one, but the small pump set may have more ordering. Uh, the, the problem with that is that uh, it allows every possible interleaving and there's no way to restrict it inside of CK. Let me illustrate this with an example. So consider this, uh, this program that is essentially a, a distributed counter. So we have a, a, a shared variable counter and uh, two threads in parallel are trying to increment the counter. And they do so by first loading the contents of the counter in a local variable, incrementing that local variable, and then writing the result in the shared counter. So uh, this corresponds to, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get a pointer. Uh, this corresponds to this pump set where we have in parallel a blue thread and a green thread that uh, each, uh, uh, each of them doing the three uh, different uh, actions. And uh, if you look at possible interleavings of this, so for instance, if you imagine the, the memory is sequentially consistent, so everything happens as if there was a, a linear order. And this is another possible interleaving. But of course, the, the first one does the right thing in the sense that the counter is incremented twice. But the second one does not thing because each variable uh, concurrently uh, uh, loads the contents of the variable, increment it, and then write it. And so uh, both uh, threads write one, and so we, uh, we don't have the result we, we wanted. To counter that in a normal programming language, we would add something like this, uh, an, an atomic construct that prevents uh, the two threads from uh, interfering with each other. And so in this work, we, we represent this at the level of pump set by drawing boxes around them. And that way, the first thread, is a, uh, the first execution can be accepted because we have a, we find, you can find a way to uh, write the boxes there that is consistent, but the second one is rejected. So how can we do this here? Uh, so this is a, a pump set. So uh, a, a pump set is defined as a, a, an isomorphism class of labeled partial orders. And so to have pump set with boxes, we add a component, which is a, a set of non-empty sets of events that corresponds to um, drawing those boxes into the diagram. So the first question we ask is, uh, sorry, uh, when we've defined pumps, uh, pump set with boxes, uh, uh, the first thing we want is to build them out of uh, elementary pump set and elementary operations. So we have two elementary pump sets, well, a family actually, for every atomic action, we have a, an atomic pump set with just uh, that action being performed. We have the empty pump sets. And then if we have two pump sets, P1 and P2, we can compose them in sequence. Uh, taking the disjoint union of uh, the set of events and then ordering uh, every event in the first pump set below every event in the second pump set. We can compose them in parallel. And we can also now draw a box around the pump set. So uh, now we can ask what kind of uh, pump set can we build from atomic pump sets with those operations. Uh, so we, we can uh, uh, give a, a characterization of it. It's every pump set, every, every finite pump set that does not include any of the following patterns. <clears throat> the first one, ah, sorry. The first, ah, okay. The first pattern is the excluded pattern of series parallel pump set, so without the boxing operation. And the last three uh, correspond to uh, 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 things about boxes. So the uh, uh, one of them says, ah, oh, sorry. One of them says that uh, boxes do not overlap non-trivially. 
And the last two say that uh, uh, basically the contents of, the, of a box uh, are indistinguishable from outside of the box. So an event that is outside of, of a box is either below, uh, smaller than everybody inside, bigger than everybody inside, or uh, incomparable with everybody inside. But it cannot pick and choose uh, which event is going to be smaller, which event is going to be bigger, etc. Uh, we can also uh, handle um, uh, pump sets with boxes axiomatically. So if we uh, take these axioms, then we get the following theorem that two pump sets are provably equivalent according to those axioms if and only if they are isomorphic. Uh, we can also generalize subsumption, which is uh, uh, the, the way to, to, to get interleaving in CKA. So here, uh, this is the definition of subsumption. Uh, and, and so, so the definition is uh, you need to have a, a, a bijective map from the big one to the small one that preserves the labeling and the order. And so here, we, when we have boxes, we also have to preserve boxes. But the, we allow more boxes, more boxes to be in the small pump set, meaning the intuition here is that uh, drawing a box around the pump set restricts behavior, so it's smaller. Uh, and we can also handle that axiomatically. So uh, if we had these two axioms, the first one being the interchange law, and the second one is saying that uh, boxing restricts, we get the following theorem that uh, a pump set is subsumed by another pump set if and only if they are provably, uh, uh, yeah, you can, you can derive this relation by the, these axioms. Right, uh, now I'm going to uh, use another example, which uh, I'll, uh, I'll use as a running example for the remainder of the talk, which is a very simple voting protocol. Uh, it, it features the distributed counter we've seen before, but there's stuff around it. So the context is that you have N voters and they have to choose between uh, say K candidates. So for each candidate, we have a, a counter that uh, tallies up the, the number of votes for that particular candidate. And then each voter uh, somehow uh, controls the thread. So the, the protocol works as follows. First, there's a choosing phase where everybody votes, and then there's a, a publish phase where every voter is, uh, is sent the, the result of the vote. So for the choosing phase, uh, every vo voter is inside the box uh, as, ah, sorry, I'm trying to have the, the pointer. Forget about it. So, okay, the, inside that box, what they do is they non there's a non-deterministic choice between uh, for each voter to choose a particular candidate. And when they choose that candidate, they load the content of the counter of that candidate, increment it, and then write the result. And then for the publish phase, in parallel, each voter is sent the, uh, the result. Uh, so to model this, we need to add a non-deterministic choice to our programs. So we do this as usual. We add a, a, the plus that models non-deterministic choice. So constant zero, which is in a way the, the non-deterministic choice some axioms. You don't have to, to, to read them. They're just usual distributivity, commutativity kind of things. And we have, so we have two sets of axioms, depending on whether or not we want to have a subsumption in our semantics. And again, we can, uh, uh, we, we can make this uh, work with the semantics. So now the semantics of a program is a finite set of POM sets with boxes. And we have two partial orders between them. Uh, the first one says that every POM set in E is isomorphic to some POM set in F. And the second one says that every POM set in E is subsumed by some POM set in F. And this corresponds exactly to the axioms I listed on the previous page. So up 
to now, everybody, I, I say, everything I said uh, has been proved in Coq. Uh, right, so no, now we can uh, write our voting protocol syntax for programs. It actually, it's already written that way. And we want to prove mutual exclusion, which is in this context, it means that uh, if uh, two voters try to, uh, uh, two distinct voters try to uh, increment the counter J, then the counter J should be incremented twice. But to express the fact that uh, uh, this protocol does not, uh, well, this uh, protocol satisfies mutual exclusion, uh, or saying that the protocol does not break mutual exclusion, we, we need to uh, express something like this, that uh, because uh, the, the protocol uh, has no execution such that the following patterns of Occur where we have uh, in parallel two uh, uh, two reading operations that load the contents of counter J, and before both uh, after both these read readings have occurred, we have two writings. Uh, because in order for the counter to be incremented twice, one of the writings should occur before one of the readings. The problem is that we cannot express this property in a statement like uh, a program is contained in a property or any, any variation around that. Because the, the set of all programs that break mutual exclusion or the set of all programs that do not break mutual exclusion uh, is not representable by a term. And even if we added the star in the syntax, it could not help. So for this reason, we introduce an assertion language, which we call POM set logic, which looks like this. So we have uh, some uh, constant to denote the empty POM set and uh, atomic POM sets. We have Boolean connectives, and then we have um, two separating conjunction, one for sequential separation and the other for uh, parallel separation. And then we have two modalities, a box modality and a context modality. So I'm going to explain the context modality uh, in the next slide. But for, for the other ones, uh, we, we define a um, satisfaction relation parameterized by a relation. So we can talk about uh, satisfying a formula up to isomorphism or up to subsumption, etc. And uh, I'm going to read here the uh, what does it mean for P to satisfy up to subsumption a statement phi then psi. It means that you can find two pump sets, P1 and P2, such that P subsumes the sequential product P1 then P2. And P1 satisfies phi up to subsumption, and P2 satisfies psi up to subsumption. Uh, right. So, so the, as I said, the, the satisfaction relation is indexed, uh, is uh, parameterized by this uh, relation between POM sets. And we have theorems, um, adequacy theorems like this, saying that P subsumes Q if and only if every, every formula satisfied by P up to subsumption is also satisfied by Q up to subsumption. And something similar for isomorphism. Just a remark, it, when we choose the satisfaction relation to be uh, parameterized by the isomorphism, we can also use negation in the formula. But it makes less sense if, uh, if the relation is something else than uh, isomorphism. Right, so I, I promised I would uh, talk about contexts. So he, here they are. So the, this um, statement at the top says that uh, P satisfies, uh, so there is a sub pump set in P satisfying phi up to subsumption. And taking a, a sub pump set works like this. We pick a set of events in P and then we keep those events, the order between them, and the boxes that contained only 
events from this set. So here you can see we keep the box four or five, but we lose the box uh, that should contain also seven and eight. Uh, then briefly, we, we can extend this to non-deterministic program by saying that the, <clears throat> there's two versions of it, saying we either satisfy universally or existentially a formula, either because every pump set in E satisfies the formula, or in there exists a pump set in E satisfies the formula. And again, we have adequacy theorems. You can look them up in the paper. So uh, just to, to conclude this, uh, this talk briefly with the example. So now we can express mutual exclusion. So breaking mutual exclusion corresponds to satisfying this formula conflict, uh, uh, meaning th there is uh, a sub, uh, sub pump set in one of the executions such that we have in parallel two readings occurring before two writings occurring on the same counter. And if we modify the, so first the, the voting protocol does not satisfy this formula, meaning uh, it does not break mutual exclusion. But if we modify and we lose the boxes, we, we lose the voting booth around the, each voter, then uh, mutual exclusion is, is broken. Uh, there's also, uh, uh, so we have this uh, separate, uh, sequential separating conjunction and parallel um, separating conjunction, which allow us to, to, to express things like, uh, so the first one says that uh, the, the protocol can be split into two phases. First, a phase where no broadcast is happening, and then a phase where no vote is happening. So saying that we only send to the voters the result after everybody has voted. We can also write the uh, formula below saying that uh, for from the point of view of each individual voter, uh, we can see the voting happening before the reception of the of the result. Uh, we can also express something like uh, the uh, everybody votes only once, or, and nobody can vote twice. Right and. That's everything I wanted to say about this paper. So there is a, a lot of future work on this topic, uh, both on the algebra side and the logic side. On the algebra side, well, the obvious thing is that we, we, we talked about concurrent clean algebra, but we, we did not include a, a very important operator, which is the clean star. So uh, the, the next thing is to, to add the star to the, to the signature, and I believe it can be done uh, rather neatly. Then there's uh, this axiom, which is also interesting to have because uh, it, it, uh, if you see the, the left-hand side, it says that we have a box inside of which we have A happening before B. And in the, in the other one, we have uh, the boxes being just around A or just around B. And uh, <clears throat> it, it seems reasonable to, to believe that the so the program on the left is more restrictive than the program on, on the right. There's not much um, behavior you can do on the uh, on the left that you cannot do on the right. Uh, but it does not fit at all the our, our current uh, model for boxes, and uh, it, it's interesting for some applications to, to add something like this. And as usual in this kind of thing, we we like to have more operators and more axioms. Um, I won't go into the details of this. Uh, on the logic side, what is uh, crucially missing here is some deduction rule or some so, some sort of proof system to 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 deduce uh, uh, things about the formulas. Uh, and, and another uh, more conceptual thing is that this logic is somewhat unusual. So usually, uh, logics that uh, deal with uh, uh, program logics. They rely on some uh, concept of states. So uh, the existence of a, a path between a state satisfying this to a state satisfying this, or sometimes it's directly a, a relational thing between um, various memory states. And here it's directly, uh, it directly talks about the, the behavior, the events that occur and the ordering between them. Uh, and uh, 
And so the, the question we have right now is uh, kind of properties can we express with, uh, with this? And that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. I'm just gonna clap on behalf of everybody. Anything else seems to be too complicated. Um, in order to ask questions from the, the panelists or the attendees, please either raise your hand or send a question through the question and answer system if you want me to ask the question on your behalf. Okay, before, uh, until somebody figures out how to use the question and answer system, let me ask a, ask a question. Did you consider any ways in which um, you, can, um, you can represent or reason on, this, uh, on these boxes things in a, in a graphical way, using some kind of graphical or graph-based formalism? Um, I, I'm not sure I understand you. I mean, they, they have... Uh, uh, I mean, you, you can draw from sets and then... Uh, right, but is, is there any... Um, okay, let, let, me ask, let me ask the question in a, in a different way. What, what, is, what do you think is, uh, is distinctive about your approach? Because there's very many uh, approaches to reasoning about concurrency and about the problems that you have shown as examples. What, what do you think is uh, particularly distinctive about your approach? Um, I think the, the okay, on, on the uh, algebra bit, uh, what, what is very nice about it is there's a, a very high degree of positionality. So not only can you, you know, take equivalence things and then compose them and you get equivalent things, but uh, there's a, a stability by substitutions. So, uh, for instance, uh, say you have two big programs and you want to, to say they're equivalent. What you can do here is you can uh, pick uh, sub programs of them and then show the equivalent and then re replace those sub programs with uh, uh, variables and then show the outer programs to be equivalent. Uh, usually, what you, what you have is that you can you have to have the same skeleton around, and then you can change sub-programs. Uh, I don't know if I'm making sense. Uh, okay. But, uh, but yeah, you, you have both this, uh, this uh, uh, compositionality thing, where you can uh, take equivalent things and then compose them in the same way, just in the same way. Okay, thank you.